recently discussed why the AUR is only made for Arch Linux. But does the model have to be like that? Could you make some sort of community package repo where when you install a package, the package acts like a regular system package. So if used on a Debian based distro, it would install it as a deb, not like an app image, not like a flat pack, not like a snap, where they're all these own separate packages, and not like Nix, where it has this completely separate packaging structure. And one dev has been trying to answer exactly this question. Today, we are looking at a project known as the Lua. Now, when I say Lua, it is L-U-R-E, not L-U-A. I know someone's gonna be like, it's not Lua, it's Lur. I don't care, this is the way we say it. So the Lua stands for the Linux User Repository. Now keep in mind, this is incredibly alpha software. It's only been in development for a couple of weeks and there's only one developer working on it and he's not doing like every single day. So the development is going to be very, very slow. Basically, the way this exists right now is as a proof of concept. It has a functional tool, a functioning packaging format, but it's not here to replace any of your existing tools, at least right now, maybe in the future, but alpha software right now. Now, this right here is the initial Lua package repo. And unlike the AUR, where every single individual package is its own separate Git repo, if you didn't know that, that's actually the way the AUR works. When you upload something to the AUR, you're basically uploading another Git repo. In the case of the Lua, we have a single repo and you can have as many packages as you want inside of it each folder is going to be its own separate package. And also unlike the AUR, I said initial package repo. So the AUR is the collection of all of these individual repos in this one place. Where in the case of Lua, Lua is the tooling you use to access the Lua repos and use the Lua scripts. So you can add as many repos as you want to add. Right now, because you know, alpha software, once again, this is the only repo, at least, I know of. So at least in this one particular way, it works more akin to your typical third-party package repo like a PPA over on Ubuntu. Now, when you want to interact with the Lua, you're going to be using the Lua program. This is the repo that contains that application. So this application is written in Go. And there is also an AUR package available as well. So if you're on Arch Linux, installing that is pretty straightforward. If you're not on Arch, then you can install it just sudo make install and you're good to go, as long as obviously you have go installed. Now from the user's perspective as a general package managing tool, it works basically as you might expect. You have your install command, remove command, upgrade, info, listing, building and adding repo. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. I think the commands are totally fine. As much as I like, you know, pacman-syu, using something a bit more, you know, sensible makes sense. And like AUR helpers such as Yay and Peru, if you try to install something and it's not available inside of one of your little repos, it will actually pass that command through over to your regular system package manager. So if you try to install something on Arch, it'll send it to Pacman. If you're on Ubuntu, it'll send it to apt and things like that. And as of the recording of this, it is supported on distros that use apt, pacman, apk, this is for Alpine Linux, not Android, DNF, yum, or zipper, which covers most of your bases, except for a merge with Gentoo. I'm not entirely sure why Gentoo isn't on this list. It could be the dev has just never used it and doesn't have anyone to test it. It could be they just haven't gotten around to it yet, but either way, Gen 2 is not supported, but I would expect, you know, some point in the future, if this does keep going, that it will be added to the list. Now, because of that package manager support, it has to do something really interesting. So I touched on this earlier, but unlike Nix, when you install a package from the Lua, it is going to generate a package for your specific distro. So on Debian, that gives you a deb, on Fedora that gives you an RPM. So when it's installed, you can either uninstall it with the Lua tool 
or with your regular system package manager. Now, obviously for doing updates and installing new packages, this has to be done through the Lua tool, but like on Arch Linux, your cleanup doesn't have to be like that. Now, every time that I go to record this video, more packages are being added to the repo. When I planned this out, there were two packages here, and I believe it was both of these ITD packages. Now, that's not really the important part. More things have been added. The important part is the format of the scripts themselves. So, like the AUR, it has an install script in here. It's not your, like, already pre-packaged thing like you'd see in something like, uh, any standard package repo. The format used here is very similar to the format used on the AUR. So let's compare like for like packages. This is ITD bin on the Lua and this is on the AUR. And as I scroll down this, you're going to notice that while the variable names are slightly different, the way that the package is actually set up is very similar and in some cases exactly the same. And the exact same is true over on ITD Git as well. It looks very similar, and in some cases, basically exactly the same, with a bit of additional information on the Lua side to support other distros. And this is completely intentional. The dev is trying to use a format that is fairly similar to what is used in a package build, because at some point, the dev actually wants to offer a conversion utility between these two formats. So does this allow AUR packages on other distros, or does it need to support its own format? It uses its own format, but it is extremely similar to what the AUR uses, so the conversion between them should be relatively easy. I'll probably even add an automatic converter that creates Lua scripts from package builds, but there will be some minimal human intervention required to just specify the differences for other distros. Now, obviously the formats have to be at least a little bit different to account for different distros, but some of the changes are completely arbitrary. So a bunch of the variable names in here are different for no functional reason, they're only changed because the dev doesn't like the other name. So you have things in a package build like package name, package ver, package rel, package desk, URL, arch, depends, and then source with the name of the architecture available. You have things like the sha sum and the name of the architecture available and things like that. But those all do exist in the context of the Lua, but they're named slightly differently. So we have things like name, version, release, desk, homepage, architectures, depths, and sources with an S on the end. Now I totally get wanting to rename stuff to make the names a little bit better, but from my perspective, it just makes the conversion harder with basically no benefit. So I brought this up to the developer and the dev is just like, eh, it's fine. I don't really care that they're different. It's not like a major deal. Writing the auto converter is still going to be pretty easy. But without the auto converter, it's just made converting the packages over much more annoying than it really needs to be. Now, one of the major issues I mentioned in my AUR video is sometimes certain packages are going to have different names based on the distro you're using, things are going to be packaged differently, and you can't just have one dependency list on every single distro. And the Lua developer has thought that through and made it so you can actually override things like the dependencies, but not just the dependencies, the build dependencies and basically everything else you might want to override. So if you want to have like a Arch version of the packaging function, you can do that. You want to have a open SUSE version of your dependencies. You can do that. And in many cases, you actually will have to do that. Obviously, not every single combination is going to be useful. In many cases, you might not need to actually specify a different version for each individual distro, but to have that there is incredibly useful. And then the one that doesn't have a distro specifier, that is going to be the one that is used as a fallback. And I think for most cases, if people actually maintain these packages, do go and test them on various distros or accept changes from people who are trying to package their distro and it doesn't work properly, I think this would mostly work. 
but it doesn't address the fundamental flaw with having a cross-distro package. And that fundamental flaw isn't the package naming. It is the version of the packages available in your repo. So let's say I want to install a audio mixer like, let's say Pulse Mixer isn't in your standard repo for whatever reason. Well, this is going to depend on a specific version of Pulse Audio. Now, this might not be a very specific version, it might be a fairly large range, but now you need to specify an individual version for every single distro. You can't just blindly install whatever package on any distro without concerning yourself with the dependency versions. So now you have to go and test it on all of the supported distros and very quickly, especially for distros like Ubuntu, which tend to ship really outdated versions of their dependencies, it very quickly devolves into effectively writing five different build scripts in a single file. But then comparing that to something like a flat pack or an app image or a snap, for example, that include bundled dependencies, this issue cannot happen there. But this is sort of a fundamental flaw with trying to use a standard packaging solution. And I didn't even mention this, but there are distros that have multiple stable releases that are still considered, you know, part of the things you could be using. Like, you could be using Ubuntu 22.04 LTS in 2023, for example, but there's going to be all of these other versions of Ubuntu in between that if you want to have something that is truly universal, it has to work properly on all of those distros as well. And it's not just Ubuntu, Fedora has the same thing, anything else that has a fixed point release. As of right now today, Nix, Flatpak, App Images, Snaps, all of these offer cross-distro packaging. Now, I don't particularly like snaps, but they certainly do that job. But I don't want to discourage any new developers from trying new things out. If you think this is a good project to pursue, I absolutely wish you the best of luck and hope the project goes well. And if it gets to the point where it's a bit more fleshed out and more than just basically a proof of concept, I'd absolutely be willing to do another video on this to sort of see the state it is in at that point. I know the dev is currently working on a web interface to have a you know nicer way to see the packages rather than just to get repo. But we'll see how that goes and we'll see what the rest of the project does into the future. So if you want to go and try this out or you want to go and help out with the project, I'll leave all the links in the description down below. Also, let me know your thoughts on the Lua in the comments down below. Is this something you would actually go and use when it's a bit more fleshed out? Or are you entirely happy with the tooling you are currently using? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, start on Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Freddy Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm tired.